The Florida legislative regular session wrapped on Friday, a sweep for Republicans flanked by the GOP House Speaker and Senate President. Governor Ron DeSantis boasted of a strong Florida economy, big changes on the way with universal school choice and victories on culture wars. The governor's take and the Democratic response. I don't know that there was uh, any meat left on the bone after this legislative session. If you look on issue after issue, uh, we uh, jointly work together to tackle this stuff head on. I mean, clearly, we are very fortunate to be in the free state of Florida. We see people want to invest here. It's a good place to do business, all these other things. And our economies outperformed the nation uh, consistently over the last many years. But the speaker passed the largest expansion of school choice, not just in Florida history, but in United States history. And that's going to make a big difference for, for families. And rightfully so, we've always focused our scholarship programs on low income families, particularly single mothers. But we also recognize uh, you could have a family earning $100,000 in, in a place like Miami-Dade County. It doesn't necessarily mean you have the ability uh, to pay uh, for other types of education. And so expanding that eligibility and saying the money is going to follow the student uh, is something that is really, really significant. Higher education major, major reforms that we've done. The idea that you would have to take some type of loyalty, political diversity oath, uh, that is imposing ideology as a condition of being hired. Elimination of so-called DEI and how that has been used as an ideological cudgel to impose ideology on the university. I would summarize this session as anti-freedom. Because when you look at the priority bills of the governor and the leadership in the Senate and the House, it really was about taking away the rights of Floridians, starting with the six-week abortion ban. Now for my roundtable discussion with News Channel 5 political analyst joining us from New England this week, Brian Crowley. Well, no governor has ever had a, a session as successful as Ron DeSantis has had with this one. Everything he wanted, he got. Uh, and he got a lot of the issues that he wanted to help him with his pending presidential campaign. He succeeded on what he considers to be uh, parental rights, abortion, uh, woke, uh, transgender, um, you know, drag queens, uh, immigration, and even his attacks on Disney. Um, these are the kinds of things he wanted to put together for his, you know, strong position among conservatives as he begins his race for uh, president. Notably, though, in a news conference, again, flanked by the House Speaker and the Senate President, Republicans, of course, Republican supermajorities, he spent the first large chunk talking about economic successes as he views them, 2.7 billion in tax cuts, and on and on and on. And uh, he doesn't do anything by accident. Uh, that seems to be the message that he's going to really try and bring home to a broader audience on the presidential trail. No, you know, absolutely. He has he has tax cuts for parents to uh, purchase things for their babies and their toddlers that will now have no sales tax. Uh, they remove taxes on uh, a whole host of things this session. But I think we should also note this is not something that the governor is bragging about. When he first took office, the 2019-2020 fiscal year budget was $91 billion. This year's budget prior to him doing any vetoes, is $117 billion. It's a nearly 30% increase over those four years. So sure, he's uh, he's might be an economic conservative for some people, but uh, not quite as conservative as Republicans have been traditionally known to be. Talk about issues that could be a drag for him economically. Many complain affordable housing. They're still not seeing it. There's certainly not enough. The insurance crisis is only getting worse. Republican lawmakers say, trust us. We've had special sessions. Help will be on the way, but it may be 18 months away to two years. But trust us. And yet, even as he begins his presidential bid, those are issues that are going to continue to resonate for a lot of Floridians and therefore on the national trail, too, I would imagine. Right, Brian? Yeah, well, last week there was an announcement that FEMA is going to be significantly increasing flood insurance for South Florida homes. Um, you know, the insurance rates for windstorm are going up uh, tremendously. And uh, insurance is going to be a big issue. And I, I I'll add, uh, Allstate announced that they were going to be increasing uh, car insurance. Insurance is going to be a big hit on a lot of people's wallets. And there's been very little said by the governor or the legislature about reducing uh, rates for customers. 
immediately. They they kind of think that something might happen in the next few years with the things they've done for tort reform. But if you're paying those huge bills right now, you don't care what happens three or four years from now. You need help right now. And it should be interesting to see how voters reacted as those, as those bills start coming in. Talk about the culture war issues of abortion uh, certainly will be a chief a wedge issue for Democrats. They'll point to the governor's support of a, a ban that to, it was a couple of years ago, 24 weeks, then down to 15. Now uh, cannot have an abortion after six weeks in Florida outside of some special exceptions. Uh, that, everything on uh, gender and diversity, conversations about sexuality and gender in schools, diversity, equity, inclusion, all that's going to come back out on the trail. Talk about that piece as he uh, is poised to head to the national trail in the next week or two. Well, abortion is going to be a huge issue. Uh, Planned Parenthood is expecting to announce this week that they're going to start a multi-million dollar campaign in Florida to try to get 890,000 signatures to put uh, an amendment on the ballot. It would take 60 percent of the voters to pass this amendment uh, to put an amendment on the ballot. They have to get these signatures by February, but uh, they're going to make a big push to try to change the six weeks to 24 weeks or viability. They're, they're saying viability, which generally is accepted to be 24 weeks. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out because even if they don't succeed in getting all of the signatures over the next six months, it'll be a big issue uh, that will probably play within the presidential campaign. And it'll be interesting to see how Ron DeSantis reacts to the effort by Planned Parenthood. Brian, on balance, though, uh, given his goal, uh, using the session to advance his goals and advance his potential and really expected candidacy, we, it, it got out of the potential category a long time ago. What grade do you give him as an old hand who covered Tallahassee politics a long time in terms of what he was trying to achieve to set himself up to move forward? Uh, look, he gets an A. Uh, he accomplished everything he wanted to accomplish. The legislature did almost anything he wanted them to do. Uh, and even outside of the legislature, if you look at the things he's done over the last year, um, you know, uh, election police, uh, you know, all sorts of things. He, he believes in the power of the governor's office. He believes in the executive power and he uses it like few governors have in the past. And uh, sure, he, he sets out his goal. And as he says, I go true north. I don't get distracted. Brian, and he's perfect. right. He did a very good job. 30 seconds in this segment. Democrats, where are they after a bruising session uh, in the minority and uh, really in the hinterlands politically? Well, Democrats need to get their act together. I think they've got a decade ahead of them of trying to build from the ground up. Uh, they need to do all they can to try to at least put Florida in play in the presidential election. I don't think they'll succeed at that. Tough road ahead for Democrats. And we'll be back with more in just a moment.